Hello. The next line of Hark the Herald Angels Sing is Offspring of a Virgin's Womb. The Nativity story is recorded in only two Gospels, Matthew and Luke. The two accounts are not identical, but one detail they agree on, that Jesus' mother Mary was a virgin. Outside of Christian circles, this can be regarded as a myth. However, the Bible is clear, and in fact the virgin birth is recorded to have been told to two separate men and one woman. The first was King Ahaz through the prophet Isaiah, who said, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. That's in Isaiah 7 verse 14. This prophecy was given over 700 years before the birth and was one of over 300 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. The second person to be told of the virgin birth was Mary herself. This is recorded in Luke 1, verse 26 to 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to you, may, may it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Such amazing obedience. Mary at first questions it, but then says the most inspiring line. I'm the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. It's estimated that Mary was only about 13 or 14 years of age. And yet she shows incredible faith. No wonder she, who in the world's eyes will be overlooked, young and poor, no wonder she has found favour with God. The third person to be told of the virgin birth was Joseph. And this is in Matthew 1 verses 18 to 21. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. His initial response is to divorce her quietly. In that culture, parents usually arranged marriages and secured them with a formal contract. The betrothal was so binding that it could only be broken by divorce. The couple would be referred to as husband and wife, although they did not usually live together or consummate the marriage until a waiting period that could last a year. 
One of the purposes of the waiting period was to demonstrate the purity of the bride-to-be. Legally, Joseph could have publicly accused Mary of infidelity and actually asked for her execution, according to Old Testament law, which is recorded in Deuteronomy 22, verses 23 to 24. But the Bible tells us he was a just man and didn't want to disgrace her publicly. This, again, is quite an amazing response. The virgin birth shows us that, one, Jesus is human and divine. The virgin birth declares that Jesus is the Son of God. He is full deity, but also full humanity, being born of a woman. But through the Holy Spirit, he was able to be born human and yet sinless. Jesus had to be fully human and sinless in order to be able to die on the cross for our sins to make us right with God. The virgin birth also shows us that too, Jesus is a saviour of, of sinners. The angel instructs his name should be Jesus. It means Yahweh is salvation or the Lord saves. It is the name of the promised Messiah. It shows he is God in human flesh come to save his people from their sins. And then point three, the virgin birth shows us that Jesus is God with us. The passage in Isaiah mentions a son the virgin conceives should be called Emmanuel, God with us. So he was given two names at his birth, Jesus and Emmanuel. These two names fully describe the work of Christ. He is Emmanuel, God with us, fully God and fully man. He is also Jesus, come to die on a cross to save us from our sins. As we reflect on the story of the virgin birth this Christmas, may we also be open and willing, just like Mary and Joseph were, to how God would like to use us and what God would like to do in our lives. And may we say, as Mary did, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, help us to be willing for you to have your way in our lives. Thank you for having a plan for us, as it says in Jeremiah in the Bible. And thank you for preparing good works for us to do, as it says in Ephesians. Please help us to put you first both now at this Christmas time and in the year to come. In Jesus' name, Amen. Have a wonderful Christmas, everyone.